you know, a lot of people like to ask me about the cool stories, but we don't always talk about the failures. I mean, the the deal in Africa was a disaster, <laughs> massive failure. I mean, we lost so Which much one? money on it. The, deal. the the heavy equipment thing, man. At one point, I had a business partner, like a he was. He's actually from Kenya, but he's an Indian guy. Weibo is his name. And at one point, we were convinced that like he had a hit out on him, like because of this bad deal gone at the machine, like. It, the, you know, when you when you do something, you're going to make mistakes. And when we were doing stuff on the scale that we were with this craziness that we were doing, like, like you're going to make mistakes. You have to. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot about the balance between risk and like deciding whether it's a failure or not. Meaning, when do we pull the plug? Or maybe we're not making money on this, but maybe the education that we're gaining is so valuable that like a loss is a win, right? But ultimately what I figured out was most of the things in business, I am not good at. So in my world, like I figured out how to leverage relationships to bring in partners, bring in team members, uh, find employees that I can trust and I just give them complete autonomy to go do their thing, right? But I think that if I, and I think most people are listening, you know, if you would focus on the 10 or 15% of things that you're good at and quit getting bogged down on the rest, you're gonna be a lot better off. You know, yeah, my taxes, my post tax, I need to finish them and I can, I can do an extension and eventually I'll find a a tax prep guy to come in and do that. has a clue what I'm doing, but like, I'm not going to sweat that. Like I'm joking about it. Who cares? I filed the extension. I'm good for another several months. Like, but I could sit down for six days worrying about that or to move the needle faster. I could be on this podcast with you learning something you're talking about. Tomorrow I'm getting on a plane and going down to Miami. Last week I got on a plane and went to Austin, Texas for two days and just learned a ridiculous amount and, and fostered some relationships. I met with Zach from Gimba and me and Kevin King went out and had, you know, cigars one night. And um, like, if I focus on that, the rest kind of falls in place, right? I hear you talking through all the areas. You know, I would say that you and I are, are somewhat similar in that regard. I'm not, I'm not the best manager. I'd say I'm a good leader. I can empower the right people to make good decisions and we can help create single threaded leaders and I can pick talent and do all those things. Am I gonna be the person who's, you know, I kind of look at it like hunters and farmers, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and farm out the day in day out practices because I'm looking to solve the next Rubik's cube that's gonna pop up into my world and whatever that looks like. And I'm gonna work backwards to think how I can solve it. So I think that that realization that you have, and I would say so few entrepreneurs have and you know just great that we're talking about the topic of things that don't go to plan you know that's that's where those learnings come from well i don't think that that there's a single entrepreneur that doesn't make the same mistakes that i did of trying to do it all you know because like we are oftentimes we're terrified but we still are overconfident like we try to bite off more than we can chew i think the successful entrepreneurs are the ones that have gotten through that growth phase and realized "Ooh, i gotta let go of 80 percent of this but you know, we're supposed to be the go-getters. We're supposed to be the doers. We're supposed to be the ones that can handle everything. And, and, and I really think that it took me, maybe I'm more stubborn or hard-headed than most, it took me several pretty big failures and really some, some heartbreaks even in business to realize like, hey Tim, you have to be humble and realize you just suck at this. And now I joke about it. Like people are just like, is, is he kidding? I'm like, no, I'd like, I, I, I am literally joking about the fact that I suck about 80%, I suck at 80% of business, right? But. But like I said, anybody that's successful has gotten to that breaking point where they realized I've just got to pick my strengths and we pick our strengths really good. And if you look at, you know, the the best businesses, they're built with a combination of integrators and visionaries. So, yeah, we do have to be careful to to stay sane in all of this and avoid drama and avoid, you know, burnout, because that's one of the biggest things that we suffer from, because, you know, it is all personal to us.